So this is Gabriel with the Investing News Network. I'm reporting from San Francisco from the Biotech Showcase. Uh, today I'm speaking with Curse management team, uh, James Zenser and Robert Martell, who is the CEO and head of research and development, respectively. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So getting started, uh, can you give a quick rundown for investors about your company and some of the most interesting points? Sure. Uh, so our company is actually a fairly straightforward company to understand. So we have three programs that are in the clinic right now. We're an oncology company. Our three programs are very specific, targeted, novel, first-in-class programs. Nobody's ever done what we've done before, so we're plowing new ground. Our first program targets a gene called MYC. This drives proliferation of cell activity, so helps your cancer cells grow really fast. We knock that down, both gene and protein, to keep the cancer under control. Second program targets VISTA, which is a, a checkpoint. So it's an interaction point between your immune system and a tumor. We can um, block that interaction to keep the immune system in the fight so that it attacks cancer cells and kills them. The third program is a, an IRAC-4, a very specific targeted program. No one's ever done this before. It targets a specific, um, it's the midosome, a specific target in your body that if we can hit it and shut it down, it decreases B cell proliferation, and too many B cells characterizes B cell lymphoma. So with three separate programs, three very separate novel targets that other people have tried before but nobody has ever done successfully before, we're the first company to have positive data, initial positive data. This calendar year, we get definitive efficacy, so definitive data to show that these programs work in all three in calendar year 2018. Thank you. And that will, will that be taking place at major medical meetings or just online? So um, both is most likely. So depending upon when we get data, if we get data and it's very convenient with a nearby medical conference, of course, that's where we would like to, to present the data. If there isn't a nearby medical conference, what we would likely do is do a top line release so investors could get a press release and read about our data. And then, of course, we would follow that up with our investigators. There are investigators who are from the leading institutions. They're from MSK, they're from Dana-Farber, they're from Mayo Clinic. Somebody from one of those institutions would be presenting the data in more detail at a medical conference. Thank you. Now, where are these uh, or have these trials been taking place? What is the growth of them? So they're, they're taking place at those centers that I mentioned, right? So, so we find, depending upon the indication that we're going after, we find the key opinion leaders, the, the doctors to whom other doctors look at for expert views and for cutting edge medicine. These are the investigators that are interested in what we're doing because what we're doing is cutting edge medicine, things that nobody has ever done before. Like Mick, that first target I talked about, Mick is spelled M-Y-C. If you Google Mick, you get two things. You get classic oncogene. It's one of the very first oncogenes discovered or a gene whose mutation is, has been known to be linked with cancer, you also get very quickly the word undruggable. So at Curious, what we really try to do in a nutshell is drug the undruggable. How do we solve these problems, these very complex problems, in novel ways that nobody else has ever been able to do before? And we're doing it in three separate areas. And as I said, we'll have all three answers this calendar year. Thank you. Now, is the goal going to be uh, combination therapies? Um, yes and no. So it, again, it depends on the program, but I think all of our programs need to be able to stand on their own. They all need to be um, therapies that show they can be efficacious a, as a monotherapy. But cancer really, um, and, and I say cancer like it's one disease, I should really say cancers. Cancers are really probably best treated and more likely to be treated in the future in combination therapy. So uh, I liken cancer today as HIV of the early 90s. You know, there was, in the, in the 80s, HIV it was a diagnosis that was a death sentence. And then slowly there were therapies that came on the market that could treat various pieces of it. And eventually the industry settled on a cocktail of drugs. And then sometime by the 1990s, when Magic Johnson, for example, was diagnosed with HIV, HIV became a disease that you live with. It's a chronic disease, requires chronic treatment, but it's not what's going to kill you. 
that's probably where we're headed in cancer, and our drugs are going to contribute to that. So our drugs do attack novel aspects of cancer, but cancer has, it's very complicated, and, and it differs from person to person and cancer type to cancer type. There will likely be not a one-size-fits-all solution, but there will likely be a cocktail of drugs that a patient might take to, to shut down different avenues that are allowing that cancer to, uh, to really progress. And, and we hope to be at the forefront of that effort. Thank you. Now, moving over to the financing, um, a lot of development stage companies, um, you know, hit uh, walls when it comes to financing. So what is Curis doing to withstand this? Sure. So we're very fortunate. Um, I, you know, the, the biotech industry can be a very tough place, uh, certainly in the early stages. And we are a classic early stage, exciting biotech company. Um, in these environments, it helps to have not just multiple shots on goal from a program perspective, but multiple shots of, on goal of being able to raise money. And that's where we are. So we have raised money in the past in equity. We have raised money with business development deals with partnerships. And we also have an approved drug. So uh, Curis has a long history of innovation. The drug that we have, Airveg, that is now sold by Roche and Genentech, was co-developed with them. Um, it was the very first drug approved that targets the hedgehog pathway. So going back 15, 20 years ago when I first started in biotech, everybody had a hedgehog program. Nobody could crack it. Curis cracked it. Curis then went to Genentech, established the partnership, finished the development with them, and that is an approved drug, and it does generate um, cash for us. It, it sold $250 million last year. Our share of that was $10 million, but it's been growing steadily at about 20% per year. It's a great source of cash. It's a foundational cash flow stream for us. It's one that we can simply take the checks and use them to spend on other programs. Or, of course, we could use them as a way to uh, finance. We can finance that royalty stream. Thank you. Now, what about the manufacturing forefront? Because a lot of companies are discussing manufacturing uh, in the early stages as well. Uh, where are you? Yeah, sure. Actually, if you don't mind, uh, Bob, why don't I ask you to chip in? Well, we have a, a dedicated uh, manufacturing team that uh, devises the chemistry around uh, creating the, um, the API, which is the active pharmaceutical ingredient, and ultimately then converting that into the um, drug product. That process is an ongoing process throughout development, and you know when a drug starts out in phase one development, um, that phase one development is going on in parallel with the manufacturing sort of the, the creation of the sort of the ultimate uh, product that will eventually go on to market and, and that's a process that's ongoing and we have a, a strong dedicated team that um, I think is moving forward quite well with that for all three of our products um, and and currently uh, you know that that effort uh, um, I would say is is, is going smoothly and, and on target you know, with our broader um, development efforts. Yeah, I, I would add to that. So, um, biotech, you often see two types of companies that manufacture two different types of drugs. So there are there are drugs that are proteins. Um, this is a an industry that started in the 1970s of how to build a protein um, in a in a biologic uh, lab, and and then of course that then grew to large scale protein manufacture, um, and lots of companies do that. And these are drugs that typically have to be either injected or taken by IV infusion. Um, then there are, you know, the other half of the industry does what we call small molecules. These are pills. Um, that's where Curis lives. So for us, manufacturing is frankly a much more simple um, and less complex process, much easier to manage. Um, you know, in layman's terms, you, you turn the crank and you get an awful lot of drug. So compared to other biotech companies, I think we have an easier path of it from a manufacturing perspective although we probably all face the very same biologic hurdles that are very challenging. Thank you. Now, uh, you did discuss this, these results coming up soon uh, that investors can look forward to. Is there any other big news in the next uh, few years or months that we can look forward to? Oh, we hope there are lots of news <laughs> items over the next two years. Now, I, I think what makes Curis very different is the near-term milestones that we have, uh, really to expand on that point. So um, we're a company where we have three truly novel first-in-class drugs, every one of them is a potential blockbuster. But blockbusters are industry parlance for a billion-dollar-a-year revenue drug. 
So the smallest of the three is a drug that looks a lot or acts in a parallel pathway to a drug called ibrutinib that is approved and sold um, by Pharmacyclics, um, which was bought two years ago now. Um, that's a $5 billion drug. That's the smallest of the three. So we're really swinging for the fences. Um, we've got a, a great deal of data that backs up why we're so excited about these programs. But these programs, I would say, are halfway through their process. Um, we need to take the next critical step. The next critical step is to show that in the clinical trials that are ongoing right now, can we continue what we've seen in the past, which is efficacy that transforms lives for patients in a way that no other drug ever has been able to do. And then, of course, for investors, can we take that and turn it into value? And, and of course, that's the goal for 2019. One of those is going to come to fruition mid-year, the other two in the back half of the year. That's great. Now, on the financing front, you said how we, you do have royalty income, um, and yet you do target that more towards the R&D. But could there be a focus towards um, in licensing new drugs or developing new drugs? Absolutely. Um, we're always having those discussions. As you probably know, that's a big focus of the conference this week. Um, we meet with investors. Of course, we meet with media. Um, but we also meet with partners and potential partners. Um, as I said, I, my view, my personal view, is that cancer is going to be treated with cocktail drugs. Ours are particularly amenable to combination because of their safety profile, because they're small molecules, they're pills. Um, they're pills that are easy for patients to take and they're easy for physicians um, to titrate the dose, to, to manage, increase or decrease the number of pills that you might take and the frequency at which you take them to, to optimize the treatment for a patient's particular cancer. Because it's such an easy drug in all three cases to combine with others, we're doing that work non-clinically in our lab. We're testing that work in patients. And of course, we're combing the field of other companies and what other drugs there are out there that might make great combinations for us. And then we talk to companies about how to make that happen. Okay, thank you. So that sums up about all the questions that I have. Is there anything else you want to add before we finish this up? No, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you for having us. No problem. Thank you both for your time today, and I wish you guys both the best conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.